Scoop the Scoop. The Scoop. Covering the Sarasota County area news. With opinions and passion. This is The Scoop. You're not going to know about it because DePino didn't think it was important enough to inform you. She has essentially turned this into a homeless, de facto homeless shelter, folks. I saw primarily a bunch of homeless people in there. The Scoop. The Scoop. Sponsored by Philsgang.com. Only $49.95 a month. Good afternoon, everybody. This is Francesco Abertino, or as my friends like to call me, Frankie. Uh, let's give a shout out. A shout out to our sponsor today, Dominic's Blinds and Decor. For more information on Dominic's Blinds and Decor, give them a call at 941-922-2345. That's 941-922-2345. Or check them out at dominicsblinds.com. And tell them Phil Grandy sent you. They'll give you one heck of a deal. Now, it is Saturday. It's August 23rd. We're just three days away from the August 26th runoff election. And I cannot emphasize enough with this, folks. You have to get out and vote. You. I'm talking directly to you. Your vote does and will count in this runoff. Since a very small amount of people will vote, several of the seats will be decided by this runoff only by a few hundred people that will dictate the direction your government will go in in the next few years. So your vote does and will count, but you got to make it out there. Now, today's conversation, it was going to revolve around the militarization of the police force and could this happen in Sarasota County? Corporate welfare being provided to developers such as Benderson and Nil uh, from us lovely taxpayers. Isn't that great? Then I wanted to touch on 2050. And they'll build out into the rural areas. The developers are only seeing green as in green backs and not green trees. And it's a shame. But I got distracted. There's a story that came out today on Harvey Dory. And this is a story I've been working for a while. But basically, this guy, he works for the Sarasota School District. He's a psychologist. He was arrested this morning for allegedly molesting a girl who lived in a therapeutic foster home that he ran with his ex-wife. The victim said he had molested her several times over the past year. Dory was employed, as I said, with the county school board. He worked in Northport and Venice Elementary School. What happened is uh, there was an incident where she came in, the girl found, uh, was found sleeping inside Dory's house. At the time, she denied any inappropriate relationships at all with Dory. Dory left the state the next day and went up to Canada, disappeared for a while, and then he came back. And they put him on, um, back on the payroll. But here's what happened, folks. This is the same Harvey that was driving down the road back, I think it was in November. He was going down 75, driving recklessly, got in a hit and run, and took off. And they ended up finding him at his house. Somebody contacted me at the school and said, hey, this guy works here and he was just arrested. So I started doing some follow-up for my Venice Scoop pages. And I found out that it was the same Harvey that works at Northport and Venice Elementary. So I, I started doing some more digging. I contacted some people within the industry. And I asked them, what's going on? And they did some digging. They found out that he had a court date coming up in December for endangerment to a child. And some other stuff related to what I just read to you. So I said, whoa, whoa, what's going on here? Really? So then I said, okay, let me take this a step further because I I have my case numbers. I had all my documentation. I wanted to make sure before I publicize it, we had our ducks in a row. So I contacted Scott Ferguson at the Sarasota County School District. And I said, look, Scott, was this your guy? Was this Harvey? He, He didn't really know. I said, well, would he not be at school if this happened? He said, no, we would still take him into school if that is him. Um, I think he was sick today or something like that. And I I recall the conversation because I was standing outside my house on the phone trying to go somewhere. And I thought, well, I'll handle this call. Because I think Scott actually returned my call to me. So I said, all right, well, fine. I go, well, what are the two, what's the case, what is, what would prevent this guy from coming back into school? And he broke down two issues. And one was an endangerment to a child. I said, well, you know, Scott, it's funny you should mention that. And this is back in November. I said, you know, he's got a court date. And I believe it was December 18th. I can't recall, but I'm pretty sure it was December 18th. And I said, you know, it's for endangerment of a child. There's restraining orders. 
There's other issues along with what this story said. Scott said, Scott Ferguson said, I've never heard any of this. I know nothing about this. If this were true and we knew about it, no, he would not be in that atmosphere. He would not be in that school. He would not be near those kids. I said, ooh, that's what I thought. I said, why don't you look into it? I said, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try not to put out too much, but you need to look into it. I have some grave concerns with this. So I put out my story eventually. And I have all kinds of uh, people, all kinds of trolls on there on the Venice Scoop, Northport Scoop back then, just coming at me, saying, you're ruining this guy's career. You're a liar. You're a liar. And I know the people that were on there saying it. Finally, after me just getting so frustrated because I knew how accurate it was, I pulled the story. I said, forget it. I don't care. I don't need this heartache. I do this for free. So then, um, lo and behold, here we are nine months later. He's being arrested yesterday at... Northport High School. And I thought, wait a second, why is he at Northport High School? That's strange. He was at Northport High School because he was still allowed to work around the kids. Yes, you heard me right, folks. I didn't stutter. He was still allowed to work around the kids at an elementary school and at Northport High School. Now, I'm not asking, and I didn't want at the time, for Scott Ferguson to fire this individual just based upon allegations. After all, innocent until proven guilty. But what I did want is him to take an intelligent approach to this. I did want him to question and find out what was going on. I didn't ex expect stuff like today, what he told the Herald. Scott Ferguson said it was too early to decide whether molesting took place. Um, it didn't happen in the school, so I don't know um, basically how it's going to be impacted, his job here. And he went on and made some just ridiculous comments. Here's what I think he should have done. And this is what I put on the scoop pages. I think he should have came up and said, hey, look, we don't know what's going on. We don't know if this young lady is exaggerating it. She's got a history. She's got some issues. Or is this actually true? So we're going to play safe. We're going to play safe for all the kids in the community. And we're going to take this guy out of the school and either put him on suspension, either paid or unpaid. And then, or, e or even put him within the school admin building away from the kids. That way, you're being fair. You're saying, here's your pay. We're just researching this. We're doing the judicious thing. We're, we're going to make sure everybody's safe. Safety comes first. But they didn't do that. Scott Ferguson took the information I gave him and did nothing with it, it appears. Did nothing. He allowed this guy to stay in the school knowing about all these issues. And this, again, this is the same guy that was driving down 75, did a hit and run. And when they arrested him at the house, he was Baker acted. He was Baker acted because he was mentally unfit. And this is the guy that's in Venice Elementary in Northport High School helping kids with behavioral um, issues. Kids that are vulnerable, if you know what I mean. He's in there trying to help them. And, you know, he's a psychologist, so I got to worry. What kind of manipulation could have taken place? And I'm sure all of you guys know what I'm saying out there. And we should all be concerned about the inaction of the Sarasota County um, School Board. It goes beyond this. I mean, even when I broke the Lamorque sto story with the American Drywall, Scott Ferguson was disassociated with that too. He was really not getting back to me. But something needs to be done with that whole group there. And um, that's one of the reasons that in Common Core, why I'm just not voting for what I think three incumbents that are running. Their uh, belief up behind Common Core and the fact that they've done no nothing on a couple of the issues that I've brought to their attention. Now, next, we're going to get back on track and we're going to cover the militarization of the police force. If you're on my scoop pages, I sent out an actual link where you can put in your state and county and see how much your, um, your local police officers have spent with the grants and with the 1033 program. So check that out. It's on my page right now. But when we get back, we are going to discuss this. We are going to dissect this because one thing we don't need is Ferguson-style um, activity happening here in Sarasota County. We'll be right back.
feel Grandia Phil's gang, you know, every time you remodel something, a house, a condo, what a pain in the neck. And the reason it's pain in the neck, you can't get anybody to work. I mean, it's tough. They always delay you. They don't show up. But that was not my experience with Dominic's blinds and decor. We needed to get some shades and we needed to get some shutters. And it was so pleasant dealing with Dominic's blinds and shutters. 922-2345. 922-2345. Check them out. Dominic's blinds and shutters. They do what they say they're going to do. There is only one talk show host, Phil Grandy, who delivers both social and financial talk. Not even Hannity or Rush can deliver a one-two punch like that. That's Phil Grandy, philsgang.com. Phil Grandy is unique, the industry leader, the first talk show host ever to combine social issues and finance into winning stock market ideas. That's Phil Grandy, philsgang.com. That's philsgang.com. Attention all listeners, are you ready for a free stock market webinar with philsgang.com? Hi, I'm Phil Green at Phil's Gang. Learn to adapt September 13th to the Federal Reserve Low Interest Rate Stock Market. No longer do we have a stock market, but a market for your individual stocks. Using the Phil's Gang charting system empowers you where you influence the outcome of your investment short or long term. Learn to adapt to invest efficiently and intelligently that September 13th. Join us September 13th at 12 noon Eastern for the philsgang.com free webinar valued at $75. $5. Phil's gang host Phil Grandy and Donald Cogswell will teach you how to adapt to this ever-changing stock market. This webinar will cover all stock market trading, all investing skill levels. You will learn how to protect your principal in this Federal Reserve controlled low interest rate market by identifying moves before they happen. To attend this free webinar, enter promo code GANG. That's G-A-N-G. Go to philsgang.com. That's philsgang.com. Call 877-600-4264. 877-600-4264. There is only one talk show host, Phil Grandy, who delivers both social and financial talk. Not even Hannity or Rush can deliver a one-two punch like that. That's Phil Grandy, philsgang.com. Phil Grandy is unique, the industry leader, the first talk show host ever to combine social issues and finance into winning stock market ideas. That's Phil Grandy, philsgang.com. That's philsgang.com. Listen to what people say about philsgang.com. You know, I'd listen to you on the radio, and I thought, oh, I love his sense of humor. He can make trading fun. I guess this is the guy I'm going to learn to chart with. The Phil Gang, Phil, I have learned so much. It is absolutely incredible. For a successful investing plan for any time frame, from current income to your retirement security, philsgang.com puts you on the path to making profits in the stock market. You make it so simple if they can really grasp what you're, you're right. trying to get through to them. Only philsgang.com's Phil Grandy and Donald Cogswell teach you, coach you, and guide you to investing confidence. Being a gang member, and you're showing us how to trade in any market, yeah. which gives you such a feeling of confidence. Why pay an outrageous fee for a one-time weekend investing class? When philsgang.com provides daily investing webinars, alerts, and investing advice for only $49.95 a month, and all material is archived, go to philsgang.com or call 877-600-4264. That's 877-600-4264. philsgang.com. For over a decade, Phil Grandy and philsgang.com has been committed to help our members reach their financial investing goals. We love to hear from our satisfied customers. You know, it's like a godsend for me right now. I've only been a member since the last 30 days, and uh, what I've seen here just uh, blows me away. I'm about $13,164 for the year. You guys are right on the money. If you want to make profits in the stock market, check out philsgang.com. 877-600-4264. 877-600-4264. When it comes to investing in this stock market, you have to keep emotions under control, invest wisely, and you need honest coaching and guidance. With philsgang.com's Phil Grandy and Donald Cogswell, you get simple, clear investment guidance that has produced profits for thousands of customers. I think uh, this year I'm up around uh, 60% on my portfolio. Following your system has been fantastic. I've been with you for about a month and a half now, and I'm already up 7%. Now becoming a new member, I've been in for two months and seeing how that trend really works. I mean, it's beautiful. I just did a calculation. I'm up $13,164 for the year. I owe it all to you guys. I've been in the business for a long time, and you're really one of the best I've ever heard. You've been a blessing. You've been a blessing. It's been fabulous. Uh, thank you so much. For more information, go to philsgang.com or give us a call at 877-600-GANG. 877-600-4264.
Frankie and I am back and right now we are going to talk about the militarization of the police and should residents of Sarasota County be concerned let me ask you this how did Ferguson become a war zone was it when the police came out they came out with their marine issued camouflage and military grade body armor toting short build assault rifles and rolling around in armored vehicles was that when it happened could this happen within Sarasota County you have robots, facial recognition, and drones flying all around there. These are the technology, um, that's a, these technologically advanced tools that used to belong to the military, but now they're commonplace in the police departments. Washington has basically incentivized the militarization of the police and the precincts by using federal dollars to help municipal, to, municipal governments build what are essentially small armies where police departments compete to acquire military gear that goes for far, far beyond what most Americans think of law enforcement. Police departments and sheriff's offices are around the country every day. They, they, they look less and less like peace officers and more and more like war fighters that belong in Afghanistan. And this is a shame, folks. And we should be concerned about it. We should be concerned. Now, using threats of terrorism as a pretext, police are buying or receiving with free grants tools developed for armed forces. And they're using them to carry out police raids and even serve a, a simple warrant. The federal government fuels this trend and in a big way, folks, in a big way. The police have virtually unlimited access to the U.S. military arsenal through this 1033 program. They also have access to billions of dollars worth of funding from the Department of Justice and the Department of Homeland Security, which they can use to buy military-grade equipment from weapons manufacturers that are lining their pockets, lining their pockets with the spoils. Through these federal programs, hundreds, hundreds of billions of dollars have flowed from the local police departments, or from the military down to local police departments over to these uh, manufacturers. When did the relationship that once had a government answering to we the people get reversed? All, my, all too many times, government from the local police to the mayors to the county commissioners now act as though they are the masters and we are the servants. Nowhere is this more evident than in the transformation of the police officers from the keepers of peace an extension to an extension of the military that's hyped and behind the power of the badges. And what, what do you think about that, folks? You should be concerned. Our government has planned for social unrest and violence in response. As a cover to the destruction of this economy, the erosion of the middle class, political opposition is now considered terrorism. And you can see it out there all the time. Teabaggers are terrorists. Under the guise of responding to this so-called terrorism or uh, natural disaster, the federal government has implemented a classic police state. From license plate readers to facial recognition software, from surveillance cameras to cell phone single signal trackers, the Department of Homeland Security is providing police with all these gadgets, all this hardware, and the software necessary to keep everybody under surveillance. And guess what? We will not find about them all too easily. The Sarasota ACU, ACLU, Barfield, the jailhouse attorney, he did a FOIA request asking which agencies had Stingray and which were using this technology. And, and using this technology basically as a guise to go out and get a warrant. Guess what? Northport police said, uh, the feds told us not to speak, so we are sealing our lips on this and you can get lost. Really? Doesn't surprise me with my dealings with the Northport police. Did you know that Sarasota police have two Humvees and one V100? The local ACLU states that the equipment 
isn't far, um, isn't, it's in ex, far excess of what civil disobedience needs, what's required for civil disobedience to be handled. That's what they told the Herald, and I agree with them. I did not see any mention of the V100, though, in the article. And this is like a small little armed tank that you see out and ta use for tactical responses. Uh, you see it basically out in the battlefields. And if you go to my scoop pages, you'll see pictures of it. And I just can't figure out for the life of me why they have it. Or grenade launchers. They have three grenade launchers. I put on my scoop site a link where you can go in and find out exactly what kind of equipment these guys have. Why? Many, you know, they said, hey, we might have this equipment, Frank, but we're only going to use it for natural disasters. We're not going to use it on the people. Uh, no, this is just for, for wartime footing type stuff. And they said that about LRAD. LRAD is that uh, sonic sound thing. But guess what? I don't know if you saw the videos. They were using that out at Ferguson. LRADs. And so with all this, we should be concerned. Now, I did ask around. Sarasota County basically has no 1033 program equipment. Venice Police, they said they're purchasing two Humvees that will be used only in emergencies. And Northport, as usual, ignored my FOIA request. I don't know what's wrong with them. The council and the Northport Police, you do a FOIA, they just ignore it. So what do we do about this? How can we change the system? How can we reverse this alarming militarization of our police? Congress is working on RAD, but that's to demilitarize federal programs like the USDAA, or USDA, the EPA, the FDA. Yeah, all these guys have these military arm, militarized police forces, and they're buying up a ton of ammo. So what do we do about it? You know, what? How, is this a deliberate plan to utilize the police departments around the country to instill fear in the citizenry? Which will no longer, we, we shouldn't tolerate it anymore. We should not tolerate such pervasively bad governance. Think about it, people. Now, we're going we're gonna to continue this conversation until the next segment. We're going to look a little bit at the SWAT teams and some of these military freebies and what we need to do to end this. That, the militarization, coming out military, militarized with the uniforms and everything is what basically uh, sparked the fire in Ferguson when they saw that. So we need to really be concerned. So we'll address those issues when I get back from this next uh, commercial break. And we'll talk to you in a little bit. Attention all listeners, are you ready for a free stock market webinar with PhilzGang.com? Hi, I'm Phil Green at Phil's Gang. Learn to adapt September 13th to the Federal Reserve Low Interest Rate Stock Market. No longer do we have a stock market, but a market for your individual stocks. Using the Phil's Gang charting system empowers you where you influence the outcome of your investment short or long term. Learn to adapt to invest efficiently and intelligently that September 13th. Join us September 13th at 12 noon Eastern for the PhilzGang.com free webinar valued at $75. Phil's gang hosts Phil Grandy and Donald Cogswell will teach you how to adapt to this ever-changing stock market. This webinar will cover all stock market trading, all investing skill levels. You will learn how to protect your principal in this Federal Reserve-controlled low interest rate market by identifying moves before they happen. To attend this free webinar, enter promo code GANG. That's G-A-N-G. -G. Go to philsgang.com. That's philsgang.com. Call 877-600-4264. 877-600-4264. Are you looking to put extra cash in your pocket? Or maybe you're looking to invest for the long term to secure your financial future? With PhilzGang.com's Phil Grandy and Donald Cogswell, you get complete guidance in your investments. Hi, I'm Phil Grandy of PhilzGang.com. I want to share with you one of the programs, one of our most exciting programs with a time horizon of investing between two days and two weeks. Recently, I purchased AUI, a gold mining stock, and also Starbucks. Starbucks, we were in that stock for six days and we made a return of eight. 
4% on our money. Our gold AUI, we're in that stock for about two weeks with a little more than 4% return. This is a great way for you to learn. My money's in that same stock and you can just follow me. You can feel comfortable because all you know is I'm right there right with you. I am guiding you. I am coaching you. Become a more educated and profitable investor. For more information, simply go to philsgang.com, philsgang.com or call 877-600-4264, 877-600-4264. Attention all listeners, are you ready for a free stock market webinar with philsgang.com? Hi, I'm Phil Green at Phil's Gang. Learn to adapt September 13th to the Federal Reserve Low Interest Rate Stock Market. No longer do we have a stock market, but a market for your individual stocks. Using the Phil's Gang charting system empowers you where you influence the outcome of your investment short or long term. Learn to adapt to invest efficiently, intelligently that September 13th. Join us September 13th at 12 noon Eastern for the philsgang.com free webinar valued at $75. Phil's Gang hosts Phil Grandy and Donald Cogswell will teach you how to adapt to this ever-changing stock market. This webinar will cover all stock market trading, all investing skill levels. You will learn how to protect your principal in this Federal Reserve controlled low interest rate market by identifying moves before they happen. To attend this free webinar, enter promo code GANG. That's G-A-N-G. Go to philsgang.com. That's philsgang.com. Call 877-600-4264. 877-600-4264. What makes investors around the world successful? They're savvy. They do their homework. They look for the best value and they find it at Interactive Brokers. Phil's Gang chooses Interactive Brokers stocks, options, futures, forex, bonds, and worldwide from one account. I recommend Interactive Brokers to all my Phil's Gang members. I use it myself. Check them out. Go to philsgang.com and click on the Interactive Brokers graphic. And that's philsgang.com. When it comes to investing in this stock market, you have to keep emotions under control, invest wisely, and you need honest coaching and guidance. With philsgang.com's Phil Grandy and Donald Cogswell, you get simple, clear investment guidance that has produced profits for thousands of customers. You know, you really got me um, in tune with the market and uh, the switch, you know, to get the shorts early. And I became a member in 2009, and uh, that you guys actually made 15 times what I had invested. That's why I'm a member of Bill's Game. Been with you a long, long time. Done really well with you. I'm up $5,000 in a month and a half. One of the very, very best that I've ever listened to or been involved in. I've been an investor for a long time. So now I'm in, I invest with confidence and knowledge instead of just hope and luck. For more information, go to philsgang.com or give us a call at 877-600-GANG. 877-600-4264. There is only one talk show host, Phil Grandy, who delivers both social and financial talk. Not even Hannity or Rush can deliver a one-two punch like that. That's Phil Grandy. Philsgang.com. Phil Grandy is unique, the industry leader, the first talk show host ever to combine social issues and finance into winning stock market ideas. That's Phil Grandy. Philsgang.com. That's Philsgang.com. The scoop on Sarasota County is Frankie Abrazino, and we're still discussing the militarization of the police force and how it could, if it could ever happen in Sarasota County. So, as to continue the conversation, um, paradoxically, we're talking the police push to be prepared. They push and they train to quell unrest and uh, fomenting the feelings that could create such an uprising like we saw in Ferguson. Americans are tired. We are tired of reading reports about law enforcement behaving less like police and more like the Gestapo, less like servants of law and more like servants of the state. Deployed with the training, the technology, the tactics, and the weapons that are capable of enforcing the increasingly unconstitutional edicts that the ruling regime of Obama has put out there. I want you to just take a look at the uh, videos that came out. There was a, a cop on there pointing a machine gun at reporters saying, F all of you guys. I'll shoot you all. 
Come on. You're an officer officer of the law. We should not be seeing this. This should not be tolerated. The ACLU's called for him to get kicked out of there, and rightfully so. Um, but more than just providing military freebies to these cops, this federal grant, this 1033 program, is designed to merge and blur the distinction between the federal, the state, and the local law enforcement. Like I said, when, when you first saw those police out of Ferguson, you would have thought you were in Afghanistan. The front line with um, its police and compact gear signals how far the state will go to make sure it retains control. And just short of a dedicated and large political movement to disarm the state and demilitarize the police, the global elite will continue. They'll continue the effort to construct an all-encompassing police state with all their sheep. In addition to rolling back the deployment of combat cops, this political movement needs to be addressed. The entire police state panoply from the Nassau to the wholesale surveillance um, to the predominance of military industrialized complex that's out there, all facets, they need to be addressed and we need to stand up and we need to vote, speak as one. Now, how about the photographic arsenal? We, uh, is it a better for the police or the citizens? It seems that there uh, is at least one area of agreement here, with some caveats, between some in law enforcement and civil lib libertarians. That cops should wear body cameras. We had our chief DePino. She says that her department is launching a year-long pilot to test out these 24-hour body cameras. They're purchasing, I think she said, 40. And she's hoping to get more than just a POV version of the shows on cops. She feels that the recording could reduce police injuries and complaints filed against the officers along with some overtime costs associated going through evidence and all that good stuff. But I, I have some questions. Will the use of the camera five modify the police behavior? Will it do it because they know they're being recorded? Sure, it's a good thing if it modifies it, but you got to ask yourself, what kind of character is modifying because they're being uh, recorded? What about the individual? The individual, will it modify the behavior of the individuals that are being arrested? Because as soon as they uh, see they're being videotaped or uh, audio taped, will they change? Will they remain hostile? Will they become subservient? The Sarasota City Commissioner Susan Chapman is asking how the body camera will prevent similar incidences like what's ha occurred in Ferguson. I don't know if she need, really needs to ask that. I mean, if a body camera was on there, we would have known what happened. Come on, Sue, wake up, smell the coffee. She says the body-mounted cameras would help eliminate situations like the conflicting accounts that are coming out of there. But will they? There are issues where they get turned off a lot or other exceptions. Like in Rialto, California, there was an officer, a uh, police officer, is wearing a so-called body-mounted camera. It's no bigger than a pager that record everything that transpires between the officer and the citizen. In the first year after the camera's introduction, the use of of force by officers declined 60%. That's a good thing it declined by 60%. It's worrisome that we had to see that number decline by 60%. And citizen complaints fell by 88%. So this is a good thing. What is to stop an officer, though, from turning off the camera and declaring it's malfunctioned? A New Orleans police officer turned off her body camera before opening fire on a man who had escaped a week earlier. Lisa Lewis uh, shot the man in the forehead during a traffic stop. Why did she turn off the camera? Therein lies one of the first policy procedures to be determined. Under what circumstances is the officer allowed to turn off or on his camera? Citizens need to know that the cameras are not being used to record only incidences that protect these officers. So we need some kind of uh, procedures in place. And we need strict rules. Body cameras are to um, hold the potential for improved public safety and better relations between police and the citizens they are sworn to serve. Now, many officers are objecting to this. They're saying, hey, I have fears of big brother. And uh, I'm a little concerned, but we're crushing that stuff. A sound policy, uh, which is created by the stakeholders, will crush that. Citizens fear about the Fourth Amendment. I fear about the Fourth Amendment issues when I'm down at Centennial Park in Venice just hanging out. I'm afraid I might be sitting there picking my nose and look up and say, oh, my God, they got a camera on me. 
And that camera goes to Public Works. The Public Works guy will say, there's that Frank Abrazino with the scoop. I'm going to put this out on Facebook. And that concerns me. So um, what I'm thinking is Big Brother, look, like I said, we have these street cameras everywhere. If it's good enough to place you and I under constant surveillance, it's good enough for the police to be under this constant surveillance. The police should be um, reminded that they do indeed work for us. And anytime the police are on duty and in the public, there's a chance that they are being watched by the public. Hello? They do not have a right to privacy when they interact with the public. Common sense, folks. Common sense. Now, the administrators out there, they have concerns over the budgeting for the investment in the new gear. But the statistical data quells that. The outlay of cash is far less than they would be spending on frivolous lawsuits out there. Uh, many will argue that the technology just is not there yet. That's also flat false. Five years ago, such a statement may have held some water, but not today. The technology is there. It's excellent technology. I would think that most cops would enjoy, enjoy wearing the cameras and would look forward to being able to show the jury exactly what a person being arrested was doing. Saying and what he looked like when he gets arrested. Looking at his shot. Looking at the guy on the camera when he gets busted. Also, it will discourage cops from being involved with any misconduct in the first place. If we lived in a world where everyone involved in the police encounter is being recorded, everyone involved has every reason to be on his or best, his or her, should I say her, best behavior. And I would remind Chief Tapino that without strong policies, without strong policies, her department could lose the public's trust, which I think is slowly slipping away now. The public needs to know about cameras. They need to know that they're not only being turned on to help the officers, that they're out there to protect the citizens. But there are certain moments such as during an interview of a sexual assault victim or talking to a confidential informant when filming may be too sensitive or even compromise the case. So we need to make sure that we have policies that are in place to handle all these concerns, all these issues. But in the long run, I think this is a good thing. And I applaud her. I think it's a one-year test with 40 cameras. I applaud her action. I, I, if you're around my scoop pages or on my national page, um, the uncensoredreport.com, you'll see I'm constantly out there reporting on issues. And my biggest concern is that the police abuses occur because the disciplinary action is too soft against them. I think that the chiefs, the captains need to take stronger disciplinary. And I'm not sure if it's the unions that are preventing this, the attorneys, or who's stepping in. But without that stronger discipline, we're going to continue to see some people that just abuse it. And it's only 10% of the officers out there, if I'm lucky. It's not all of them, folks. A lot of our officers are great officers, and this camera will just be another tool in their box. We'll be right back. Attention all listeners, are you ready for a free stock market webinar with PhilzGang.com? Hi, I'm Phil Green at Phil's Gang. Learn to adapt September 13th to the Federal Reserve Low Interest Rate Stock Market. No longer do we have a stock market, but a market for your individual stocks. Using the Phil's Gang charting system empowers you where you influence the outcome of your investment short or long term. Learn to adapt to invest efficiently, intelligently that September 13th. Join us September 13th at 12 noon Eastern for the PhilzGang.com free webinar valued at $75. Phil's gang hosts Phil Grandy and Donald Cogswell will teach you how to adapt to this ever-changing stock market. This webinar will cover all stock market trading, all investing skill levels. You will learn how to protect your principal in this Federal Reserve-controlled low interest rate market by identifying moves before they happen. To attend this free webinar, enter promo code GANG. That's G-A-N-G. Go to philsgang.com. That's philsgang.com. Call 877-600-4264. 877-600-4264.
Are you looking to get back into the stock market? Are you ready to take control of your investments? Why not go to philsgang.com where Phil Grandy teaches and provides complete investing information for those that want to learn to invest. Phil provides the daily market information and you'll learn at your pace when you want, where you want. And most importantly, all philsgang.com material is archived. Check out philsgang.com, philsgang.com, 877-600-GANG, 877-600-4264. When it comes to investing in this stock market, you have to keep emotions under control, invest wisely, and you need honest coaching and guidance. With philsgang.com's Phil Grandy and Donald Cogswell, you get simple, clear investment guidance that has produced profits for thousands of customers. I think uh, this year I'm up around uh, 60% on my portfolio. Following your system has been fantastic. I've been with you for about a month and a half now, and I'm already up 7%. Now becoming a new member, I've been in for two months and seeing how that trend really works. I mean, it's beautiful. I just did a calculation. I'm up. $13,164 for the year. I owe it all to you guys. I've been in the business for a long time, and you're really one of the best I've ever heard. You've been a blessing. You've been a blessing. It's been fabulous. Yeah, thank you so much. For more information, go to philsgang.com or give us a call at 877-600-GANG. 877-600-4264. What makes investors around the world successful? They're savvy. They do their homework. They look for the best value, and they find it at Interactive Brokers. Phil's gang chooses Interactive Brokers stocks, options, futures, forex, bonds, and worldwide from one account. I recommend Interactive Brokers to all my Phil's gang members. I use it myself. Check them out. Go to philsgang.com and click on the Interactive Brokers graphic, and that's philsgang.com. Attention all listeners, are you ready for a free stock market webinar with philsgang.com? Hi, I'm Phil Green at Phil's Gang. Learn to adapt September 13th to the Federal Reserve Low Interest Rate Stock Market. No longer do we have a stock market, but a market for your individual stocks. Using the Phil's Gang charting system empowers you where you influence the outcome of your investment short or long term. Learn to adapt to invest efficiently, intelligently that September 13th. Join us September 13th at 12 noon Eastern for the philsgang.com free webinar valued at $75. $5. Phil's gang hosts Phil Grandy and Donald Cogswell will teach you how to adapt to this ever-changing stock market. This webinar will cover all stock market trading, all investing skill levels. You will learn how to protect your principal in this Federal Reserve-controlled low-interest rate market by identifying moves before they happen. To attend this free webinar, enter promo code GANG. That's G-A-N-G. Go to philsgang.com. That's philsgang.com. Call 877-600-4264. 877-600-4264. Hey, this is Frankie with the Sarasota County Scoop out there. Hopefully, I'm driving a point home and I'm making some sense to you. Um, again, I want to emphasize, I think overall we have some excellent officers out there. I think 90% of them are out there. They're dedicated to doing their job. It's just that 10% that are abusing the system and they know they can because of the soft disciplinary action that's being taken against them. But let's jump over to something else today. And let's jump over to economic development or what we call corporate welfare. It's economic development if you're a politician. Um, the question is, is there genuine or urgent desire in Sarasota County to trigger an economic rebirth within this county? That's the question. Is, is that why we see deals like Benderson Park or the University uh, Interchange Project or allowing people, developers like Neil, to uh, build east of uh, 75 and forget all about the zoning laws that were put into place with 2050. These, there are two profoundly different visions of how to generate income, um, economic development within this county. One version assumes that progress can be achieved only if the government leads the process of development and primes this economic pump. The other vision recognizes that the, the wise approach is not to try and pick winners and losers, but instead provide the best possible climate of incentives and simplified regulation to foster local enterprises. Sarasota County uses the government vision. They like pumping the tax dollars into businesses, especially their cronies. 
The county has entrusted that our county leaders are focused on economic development with significant public resources to deliver high quality job creation results. But it's being, is this really being accomplished? I say no. Some prominent activists like John Suse believes there may be some conflicts of interest. The appearance of a paid to play scheme for winning favorable treatment and a repeated practice of picking winners and losers in the marketplace through targeted business favoritism and selective incentive deals. In comes Benderson. Let's look at the rowing park. Benderson contributed $1 million to it, and the county renamed it after him. Really nice of us, right? Hey, he gave us a million dollars. Hey, we'll rename it after you. Thanks a lot, buddy. Well, here's the issue. This project ballooned. It ballooned from the initial $2 million price tag up to $30 million. And guess how much us taxpayers of Sarasota County are on the hook for? $19.5 million, folks. That makes the $1 million look like chump change. Let's take that name away from Benderson. Um, I, you know, that's just the put. That's just the frosting on the cake. Wait, this is a sweet order of dill that even gets better for Benderson. You see, the county went with Sanka, S-A-N-C-A, to run this park. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Did I mention that Sanka is controlled by Benderson? And it, it gets better. This sweet order of dill keeps getting better. They're, they're expecting to get a what? $800,000 over the next four years. And you're thinking, okay, well, they gave a million dollars. Huh? Tax write off. Yeah, maybe balances out with the 800000 But here's the other kicker they also will get $3 million to manage the park. That is three times more than a construction manager that works for the county. How about the property rights? They have property rights to the dirt, to the what minerals. <laughs> Benderson gave very little, and they benefited immensely. So my question is why? Why does this continue to go on in this manner? All of this was done under a no-bid contract. How does this happen? Why are we paying out this commercial welfare to Benderson? The entitlements. Does this company really need entitlements to survive? Why are Sarasota taxpayers sub subsidizing everything? Why is the county commission picking winners and losers? Simple questions. Subsidizing by government eliminates competition, doesn't it? So Benderson can eliminate them all just by donating $1 million to his little park. Competition is the basic core, the, the core principle of free market systems. The government does not belong in any business. They need to stay out of it. What about the $53 million to increase the University I-75 interchange? They want to call it the Diamond Interchange. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Somehow, now the county is being told it's going to cost $72 million. Has Diamond Interchange turned into a $200 million scam? Is this done just to appease Benderson with his new mall? Benderson will profit from this interchange, which will increase the traffic flow to his lovely new mall. Benderson and other developers are obligated, obligated, I say, to pick up this tab. But they want the county to come in. They want the county to pick up the tab. And guess what? It looks like we will. It does not take a rocket scientist or uh, staying at a Holiday Inn Express overnight to know that once the mall was built, there would be some major congestion issues. Hello, McFly. Where have you been the last few years? It's a major congestion issue there now. What was the county commission thinking at the time? I will tell you what they were thinking. They weren't. They were not thinking at all. Well, they, are, they were not thinking of what would be in the taxpayer's best interest, I should say. Instead, instead, folks, they were looking at what is in the best interest, in, uh, interest of that developer, Benderson. A state that has no income tax, inexpensive food, and energy will attract plenty of businesses without having to give all away all this money. Doing the same things over and over is like a useless individual who will um, continue to repeat the same mistakes by ignoring history. Governor Scott, during his inaugural address, he stated that Florida has to offer the best chance for financial success. Not a guarantee, but the best chance. He said three forces are markedly reduced, um, reduce the chances of success. That's taxation, regulation, and litigation. Together, those three form the, what he termed the axis of unemployment. 
He went on to state that private sector jobs grow in places where public sector spending is kept within bounds. Were any of the county commissioners listening to this? Or were they listening and they just forgot what he said? And so the corporate welfare program of Sarasota continues on. How can I get some of this money? Oh, wait, that would require the padding of some political pockets. Something I just can't do. And we're, we're concerned about it, Neil, too. Neil, when they were out there looking at the rezoning, many people weren't even aware of it. The government puts out their little notifications and papers. It took me going through, finding it, putting it out to my mass audience on the Venice Scoop, which, uh, uh, I don't know, it's like 24,000 fans and a reach of about 200,000, something like that, weekly. It got everyone's attention. The citizens rose up, but guess what? The council wouldn't listen to them. They said, oh, hardly any people from the city uh, commented. I commented. You ignored my comments. You ignored my thoughts. Bob Daniels, Councilman Daniels. Then he would sit there. You have people coming up that are live right across the street, but they're considered county. And he'd say, we, you, we shouldn't really be listening to them. We shouldn't really be listening to them. Forget the fact that their kids go to school in the city of Venice. Forget the ki fact that they have businesses there. They employ people from there. What in God's name is wrong with these politicians? It's time to change, folks. And that's why August 26th is so important. You need to get down there. You need to vote. You need to vote. Right now, I've, I've thrown my support behind people like Gonzalez, uh, Carajulo, and um, amongst others. There's a few others out there. But if you like this show on my local news and you want to catch more, try my national. I do a national show every morning at 9 a.m. at the uncensoredreport.com. Or you can just go to Phil's Gangs page, go down to the bottom, and you're going to see my mugshot. Just click on that mugshot, it'll take you directly to my page. I got all kinds of great stuff there. And I look forward to I'm talking to some of you guys during my daily show. For Frank Abrazino, this is it. We'll see you next week. Thanks for listening. This has been the Scoop Radio Show, sponsored by Phil'sGang.com. your money manager giving you safety and security? Wouldn't you like to make your money work harder for you? Then you should consider joining PhilzGang.com, where thousands of individual investors have successfully profited. This year I'm up 60% on my portfolio. Following your system has been fantastic. I've been with you for about a month and a half now, and I'm already up 7%. I've been in the business for a long time, and you're really one of the best I've ever heard. Well, I just want to let you know how great, what a great teacher you are. For over a decade, Phil'sGang.com's Phil Grandy and Donald Cogswell have been teaching, coaching, and investing right along with all Phil's Gang members. I want to thank Donnie for market wrap. I bought 2,500 shares of AUI in 